Uh, we now actually move uh, to the part of the event uh, which is dedicated to the presentation of the organization and the content of the degree. And I guess this will be particularly for, of interest for prospective uh, students and uh, to let them uh, feel comfortable, we'll actually start with some uh, questions, even though we are not to, grow, we are not to uh, grade them now. Uh, so I leave the floor to our cybersecurity researchers, uh, Eleonora Losiuk, which uh, we will start uh, uh, with some questions. Okay, so good morning everyone. Thank you for the introduction. So we are going to play uh, a little questionnaire through Kahoot. Uh, I encourage you to, to go to that website and to enter the PIN from your mobile device. That would be more comfortable. So let's wait for all the participants to join the, our questionnaire. Okay, 26 players, let's wait a little bit more. On the YouTube live channel, we were around uh, 85 participants. So I hope that at least half of you managed to, to join the question. So while waiting, I'm going to explain how it works. So basically on your mobile device, you will see only uh, four figures. Each figure is uh, uh, associated to the possible answer, but for reading the, quest the question, you have to see my screen or actually to listen to my voice. So on the mobile device, you will only see the answers and the questions are provided online from my screen. Okay, more people are coming. Let's wait for a couple of minutes more. I think we can start. No, oh, more people are coming again. Okay, I think I can start. So let's start with the first question according uh, concerning cybersecurity. 
So it seems that according to the World Economic Forum, uh, an infection disease has a probability equal to 30.8% to be the next worldwide fallout. Considering this, what do you think will be it is the probability associated to cyber attacks to be the next worldwide fallout? So the possible answers are 25.1%, 25, 25.4%, 37.8 or 40.1 percent. Give your answer. Let's see what's your guess. So basically the question is to compare cyber attacks to infectious disease like COVID and whether the probability associated to cyber attacks is worse than for infection disease. Okay, seems that most of you answered. Let's wait for a few seconds more. So the right answer was a 37.8% and yeah, most of you got it. So good. We have an intermediate scoreboard. So EpiChicken seems to be at the top now. So next, next question is, uh, what is the number of estimated available jobs in cybersecurity worldwide in 2021, according to you? Possible options are 0 0.5 million, no jobs available, 4 million, or 1.8 million. What do you think? Someone is left. Okay, so it seems that uh, the right answer was 4 million jobs will be available in 2010-1 in cybersecurity, but most of you thought about a lower answer, lower number, which was 1.8 million. So there is actually more space for you for working in cybersecurity than you expected. Next question is what is the percentage of women working in cybersecurity in 2019? 50%, 2%, 20%, or 13.5%? So I can include myself in this percentage, so at least there was no zero percentage. But let's see how many women were working in cybersecurity last year. Okay, the right answer was 20% and you thought even a lower percentage, so only 13% of women were working in cybersecurity, we can definitely do better. So let's improve this percentage and statistics from now on. So next answer moves towards the Italian context, the Italian scenario, and uh, considering in 2017, the number of employees in Italian cybersecurity companies were more than uh, Five thousand. What about 2019, according to you? So how many employees did we have last year? More than 20,000, more than 10,000, more than 2,000, or more than 17,000? Okay, so the right answer was uh, four times that we have 
that we had last year four times the number of uh, uh, employees than in 2017 and most of you answered more than 17,000 so we were, you were close but we haven't chose, chosen the right answer so the next question is is still in Italy what is the occupation rate one year after the graduation in a master's degree in cybersecurity so 90, 95.4%, 98.6%, 97.2% or 100%. So basically if it is 100%, it means that uh, everybody studying, any student that is going to, uh, to get a degree, a master degree in cybersecurity is going to have a job one year after the graduation. That would be a good shot. So let's see what you think about it. And the answer was 100%, uh, and yeah, you most of you got it. So also studying cybersecurity is the good choice, if uh, considering that one year after the graduation, you are going to have a job for sure. Next question, still in Italy, how much do you expect to earn three, year after, uh, three years after your graduation? So possible choices are 1,600 euros per month around 1,400 euros per month, 1,800 or more than Mr. Robot, which is also a good choice. I guess that uh, Many of you are Googling how much Mr. Robot earns to compare with him in order to answer this question. So let's see what is the right answer. Yeah, okay, so most of you got it. Uh, after three years, three years after your graduation, you're going to earn uh, on average 1,800 euros per month. Now, looking into the University of Padova, how do you learn cybersecurity at the University of Padova? I mean, there are different possible options. One is uh, also through capture the flag competition. You can't learn cybersecurity at all, so don't lose your time. Only through theoretical books or only through traditional lectures. So the point is whether cybersecurity is a subject that you can learn only through traditional lectures and theoretical books or there are, are there different ways to learn to learn it. So some of you might also might already be capture the flag competition players. And yeah, this is the right answer. So for those who don't know what are CTFs, those are basically competitions in which you are given some challenges, cybersecurity challenges, uh, during which you have to find the flag that this time is not the, let's say, physical object, but uh, just a string that is uh, uh, hidden somewhere in a software and you have to break it in order to, uh, to achieve uh, the flag. Next question. So what is the name of the first Italian training program in cybersecurity for young students? Cyber competition, cyber cup, cyber challenge .it or cyber game?
Come on, I know that the, the answers sound similar, but there is the right one, which is actually cyberchallenge.it. So yeah, 26 of you managed to provide the right answer. So since 2018, cyberchallenge.it has been uh, uh, organized uh, in Italy as a training program from, for uh, young students. And now the next question is, uh, do you think or do you know whether the cyberchallenge.it event is organized at the University of Padova? So the answer could be no, we don't organize it. Yes, and we also won the first edition. Yes, but we never win, so maybe better to give up or who knows. I hope you believe in us, so you are giving the right answer. And the right answer was yes. Uh, we are part of this organization since the first edition. We actually won the first edition and uh, we'll keep organizing the event at the University of Padova. So we hope to see you also at the next cyberchallenge.it cyber uh, event next year. So most of you already knew it, so good. And okay, the questionnaire is over. So let's see who is the winner. On the third place, we have Polite Buffalo. On the second place, we have Bright Shark and the winner is Let's see. Smooth Buffalo. Okay, I don't know who is the physical person behind this uh, nickname, but uh, good choice. And uh, I don't know whether we are going to to provide you some uh, uh, some prize. But thanks for for taking part in the question. Okay, I'm going to. Thanks a lot, Eleonora. And uh, we don't have prize uh, for now, but uh, we, we extend our congratulations to the people in the podium. I will actually now leave the floor to my colleagues of the study program committee and professors that uh, actually will teach uh, the various courses in our degree. And once more, I want to take the chance to thank all of them for the great effort and contribution in setting up uh, our master's degree. I will now leave the floor to Professor Nicola Ferro uh, for an introduction of the master's degree. Thanks. Okay. So, good morning to everybody. Now we will start to go a little bit into the details of uh, the teaching offer uh, of our master's degree in cybersecurity. Uh, what are we going to talk about uh, today? So, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what is a master degree in cybersecurity in general, and then uh, what is uh, unique to our own master degree. So uh, what special ingredients we have put in our teaching offering. And then my colleague, uh, Professor Michele Zorzi, will go on uh, talking about the overall organization and the details about the uh, study plan. So uh, this morning we, we heard uh, in many different ways how important and how much transversal is cybersecurity for all aspects of society, industry, government, uh, etc. And obviously for education and research. So uh, we need to understand what is in general a, a master degree in uh, cybersecurity. It is regulated by a class called LM66 and its distinguished feature is uh, to be an highly interdisciplinary master program. What do I mean? That uh, I mean that this program is made up of three main areas. One is science, one is technology, and the other areas are law psychology 
and the business. You can see uh, on the right, more or less, uh, the proportion of uh, these uh, uh, areas. So three quarters of uh, the program uh, are for science and technology, which basically means uh, uh, math, uh, uh, mm, computer science uh, and uh, different aspects of uh, engineering, uh, physics, uh, and so on. And uh, one quarter of the program is uh, for uh, uh, um, law, psychology, and uh, business. So you, you see, it is a, a master program which really tries to blend different expert expertises to uh, react and uh, to properly address uh, the challenges posed by uh, cybersecurity. And uh, one important thing to know about this uh, program is that uh, it allows you to get the national qualification for the engineering professions. So you can register in the uh, so-called Albo degli Ingegneri for the Italian uh, students. Uh, so uh, how is uh, uh, a master degree in cybersecurity usually instantiated in uh, in Italy. So traditionally, uh, it it was uh, uh, and it is uh, a curriculum within uh, some other uh, master programs. So typically, it is a curriculum within a computer science uh, master program, within a computer engineering master program, and uh, within a telecommunication engineering master program. So this basically means that uh, you, in these cases, you learn mostly uh, the skills and competencies of the uh, specific master program. And then on top of those competencies, uh, you add uh, some uh, skills of uh, uh, security. In Italy, uh, on the other end, there are very few native uh, uh, cybersecurity master's degrees program, so master's that uh, belong to the LM66 uh, uh, class, uh, I think uh, around four uh, or, or five uh, programs. And uh, typically uh, they are rooted in a single department, uh, usually a computer science, uh, appetite skills coming from law and business for the regulatory aspects uh, of uh, security. And we uh, offer a uh, uh, different uh, approach in, in the sense that, as also uh, told this morning by the director and our uh, director of departments, we really try to uh, bring an interdisciplinary approach uh, in, in the master degree design. So it is a joint effort between several departments, the Department of Mathematics for the scientific area, the Department of Information Engineering for the scientific and technological areas, and other departments, psychology, law, and the business. Really, we are working all together to uh, bring to you a, a fully interdisciplinary uh, master degree program where every point of view is uh, represented in uh, uh, the teaching uh, staff. And uh, in particular, we deepen three core areas uh, in this uh, program. We strengthen the engineering and the physical layer skills. Uh, we uh, complement uh, an innovative uh, machine learning perspective. So we give you advanced uh, skills to uh, uh, analyze and uh, recognize uh, uh, different forms of uh, security treats, uh, and we also uh, boost on the psychological expertise like uh, uh, cognitive aspects or uh, human computer interaction because uh, you really need to have a 36 degree approach to uh, cybersecurity. How do we do that? As uh, already said many times today, we build on the scientific excellence of the contributing uh, departments because uh, we are. Uh, top researchers in many of the subjects we are going to teach you cybersecurity, machine learning and artificial intelligence, big data analytics and information access, telecommunication networks, quantum cryptography and communication, cognitive and computing, uh, computational neurosciences, and the human computer interaction, just to mention a few of them. 
and also because we rely on very strong industrial connections. You have seen a few of them represented in the panel today, but uh, we have uh, many others in the, in the defense, insurance, consultancy, web development, electronics, telecommunications, biomedical. You can just name a sector and uh, we possibly have uh, a connection. So all of these uh, allowed us uh, to uh, design uh, a unique and very advanced master program. And now uh, Professor Michele Zorzi will uh, give you the details uh, of this uh, program. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michele Zorzi. I'm a professor with the uh, Information Engineering Department. I teach telecommunications and networks. And I'm a member also of the committee that designed this uh, program. And so I'm going to tell you, described just a few minutes ago, are implemented in the, the specific program that we offer at our university on cybersecurity. Well, first of all, this is a master's degree. So for the Italian system, it's a laurea magistrale, so it's a second level degree. It's fully taught in English, and it comprises 120 ECTS. So the ECTS, for those of you who are not familiar with the Italian system, these are units that measure conventionally the effort that the student has to put in the studies. And uh, as shown here, you know, the one ECTS, uh, which stands for European Credit Transfer System, uh, is uh, taken to be equivalent to about 25 hours of student work, of which one third correspond to uh, lecturing hours. So the student going to class and listen to lectures. And two thirds corresponds to uh, study and the homeworks and everything that's done not in the class. And so if you do your math, this is a two-year program, so there is 60 credits every year, which corresponds to uh, 1,500 hours every year, which is a full-time job. Now, all courses that are offered in this program are uh, six ECTS, which means uh, they will include 48 hours of lecture, and uh, uh, you'll take a number of them to uh, total the 120 credits you need to graduate. Now, more specifically, there will be a block of 60 ECTS, which are essentially mandatory courses that are, you know, the group of courses that characterize the foundation and also some advanced topics in the area of the, of the program. And then you will take, so this 60 ECTS is 10 courses. Then you'll take another 12 ECTS for elective courses, so two courses of your choice, and then another two courses uh, that you can freely choose uh, uh, in a very long list. Uh, and I'll give you the details in the next uh, slides. Now, in addition, you'll have uh, six credits related to soft skills. So three are given to uh, a certification of English language. Uh, so this will be a complete B2 level. So if you already have that certification, which includes uh, you know, listening, speaking, and writing, if you already have it, then uh, when you enroll, you will automatically receive these three credits for the English activity. If you don't have it, then you'll find in the offer a course that prepares you for this uh, exam and also the opportunity to take the exam and get the certification. And so this is something that you do within the program if you don't have it when you enroll. And then another three credits for extra activities, again, soft skills uh, that this may be related to seminars or projects. Um, so if, during your Two years, uh, you'll uh, uh, do things that uh, will correspond to a certain number of hours, and these hours, after accumulating enough of them, will translate into these three credits that will be assigned 
for extra activities. And then finally, you have 30 credits, which is equivalent to one full semester for your uh, final project uh, and thesis, which uh, could also be carried out uh, in a company through an internship. Okay, so you have different options for the thesis. You can uh, go out of the university and spend uh, a semester in a company and doing a project there, or you can uh, uh, do your thesis uh, on more of type of academic kind of approach uh, within the university, and this you know is your choice, and you can uh, uh, decide what you want to do. So you do your math. This list comes to the 120 credits you need to graduate. So let me tell you a little bit uh, more about the list of courses that you have. So we have uh, a number of mandatory courses, as I said, and these are divided into three general areas. One is foundations of security. Another is uh, foundation of uh, other methods that support studies in the area of security without being security per se. And the third is uh, uh, more advanced and specialized courses uh, uh, with the addition of some cross-cutting courses. So let me get into the details first. So the foundational security rented courses are these two. Uh, notice the first one is an integrated course uh, which uh, uh, carries uh, double weight. So this is 12 credits and it's the combination of uh, a module on principles and practices of cybersecurity and a module on cryptography. And then the other course uh, for the foundation of security is the course of information security. Okay, these uh, uh, three modules will give you, uh, you know, general knowledge about uh, what security is, what are the main attacks, the main methods, and so these will also uh, align students with different uh, backgrounds to start the program. The second group is uh, fundamental supporting methodologies. Uh, so these are courses that are uh, deemed to be fundamental for people studying security, even though they're not uh, uh, only about security and they are in fact used in many other disciplines. So these include machine learning, deep learning, cognition and uh, computation and uh, stochastic processes right so modern cybersecurity relies heavily on uh, probabilistic techniques uh, on learning techniques uh, computation and so this uh, will give you a background on this uh, in these areas to strengthen your uh, technical abilities towards solving problems in security area and then more advanced courses uh, like biometrics uh, uh, and advanced topics in computer and national security. So here you start maybe looking more uh, closely at applications and uh, how these techniques that you have learned can find uh, uh, use and application in real systems and to solve uh, real problems, which is the goal of this whole program. Okay, now in addition to this list of courses, that uh, uh, relates to area, but, but not now this, where we offer a course on human computer interaction, law, where we offer a course on law and data, and economics, where we offer a course on service management. And so to complete your um, mandatory course requirement, you will have to choose at least one of these three courses, uh, depending on your inclination towards uh, uh, psychology, law, or uh, economics. So the list uh, on top plus one of these three courses at the bottom will give you the 60 credits for the mandatory block. Now in the uh, elective courses uh, we have a long list from which you select uh, two courses. So this list uh, as you can see includes uh, a mixture of uh, courses that are, that are more fundamental, some others that are more security specific, others that are a bit broader, some others that are uh, very application oriented. And so here, according to your taste, you will pick uh, two courses uh, that uh, you want to follow to um, complement you know, the list I gave you in the previous slides. And then finally, uh, 
you have another 12 ECTS, which means another two courses, which are completely at your choice, which means uh, that these two courses could be chosen again from this list, from those uh, you didn't uh, pick, or you can uh, uh, choose uh, one or two of the cross-cutting courses where you had to pick one, but uh, uh, you, know, you can take more than one if you want, or you can even pick those courses in other master's programs at the University of Padova. For example, if there's a course in the computer science uh, program or in the, in the computer engineering or in the ICT for internet multimedia, a course that is not included in this list and you'd like to attend and to include in your uh, curriculum, you can certainly do so by using these uh, you know, two slots for two courses here to pick that. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, if you want uh, some help in, in choosing other courses, uh, uh, there will be people, faculty members, uh, who will be part of the teaching committee who can help you make the appropriate choice because of course, what we want is that uh, your choice leads to a coherent program and so something that is meaningful and it's, it, it maximizes you know, the effectiveness of the uh, program that you select. And so all in all, uh, you know, we think we designed a solid program which uh, tries to mix different expertise from uh, uh, the main areas that relate to cybersecurity, so mostly computer science and uh, uh, communication and information technology engineering, uh, in addition to uh, related areas in other disciplines, including psychology, economics, and law, uh, you will have a strong background of core security topics. You'll have a solid knowledge of underlying principles, methodologies, and technologies, as well as relevant locations. Uh, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of cross-disciplinary implications of security aspects, which are key to be you know, effective and, and knowledgeable in this uh, uh, broad area. And uh, uh, if you look at other programs that are comparable and offered uh, nationwide, but also at the European level, you can uh, see that, you know, what we offer is quite competitive, both in terms of the quality of the teaching and of the faculty, as well as uh, uh, in terms of the uh, mix of topics and, uh, you know, the overall uh, expertise you will gain by the time you graduate. And so with that, I will leave the floor to Laura for the uh, more administrative part of uh, this program. Thank you very much, Mr. Zarzi. Um, I should like, first of all, to thank uh, our professor to invite me as a representative of Teaching Activities Office for the Datic Secretariat. First of all, the first question is how to apply. Um, if you have a bachelor, an Italian bachelor degree, uh, you have to follow this link, Avvisi di Admissione. Admission call application contains all the information um, needed to apply. Uh, the, visa, the, the Avviso di Ammissione is about to be published at the end of next week. Uh, so you have, please read carefully about what you have found in this link. Um, if you, for about international students who wish to pursue in education uh, in Italy are always welcome. And uh, here there is the link, Dream Apply. Um, the second call will close on 7 July. So. Students are welcome to apply for this second call. A uh, second slide is about the entry requirements. Uh, what are the requirements must have is often a, um, a question that students always uh, write us by through email. Um, there are some, this is the list of entry requirements. 24 ACTS, the European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System, CFEU in Italian, achieve it in informatics, engineering informatics, and mathematics, the 18 credits, 24 and 18 credits. Also, you, the entry level uh, of English is B2, but only reading and uh, listening. 
productive skills are required, but uh, you have to pass an exam, a specific exam during your program, your master. You must also have obtained at least 85 points and you have an adequate personal curriculum studio knowledge, competence, capability in the framework of computer science, information engineering. Uh, another question always students have is, what kind of international program master degree of, or the University of Padova offer us? Uh, the University of Padova has been promoting students with mobility uh, for over 30 years, and all the students have the opportunity um, to spend a semester or um, full academic year in a, at a partner university uh, to study or to carry out research. Um, now I show a short list. The following list is not exhaustive, uh, but those are, these are the main program. The Erasmus Plus, uh, through which uh, you can attend courses, take exam, prepare dissertation, and also you carry out an internship. These are the two main links, uh, and if you check and click here, you will find all the information about Erasmus Plus Studies and Trainship Mobility. Another, another program is the SAMP, is very similar to uh, um, Erasmus Plus program, but uh, this program which allows students to spend a period in, in Switzerland. And the last one is a new project of the University of Padua uh, that promotes uh, mobility uh, in non-European countries, USA, Canada, Asia, or other countries not European. Payment and fees uh, is my uh, last slide uh, because it's very important to know for that academic, for this academic year, you have to pay about uh, 2,000 euro divided in three standards, but no worries, no panics because um, you can, the tuition fees can be reduced really. Uh, here I put some links that it could be useful for students. Um, the following pages summarize all the possibilities uh, students have to apply for reduced fees. Uh, here particularly there is a um, list of the funding opportunities. And also the University of Padua and the region there are a lot of um, actors, uh, public private institution uh, that offers uh, during the, the academic year scholarship to support uh, a particular kind of students uh, like students with specific or um, specific sport or academic achievements. So thank you very much and this is the two link, this is the website, the web page of the, our master degree program, this is the mail, email uh, and so if you have any question, drop me an email and uh, we will reply to you soon. Thank you very much. So now uh, I leave the floor to Professor Ballan for questions and answers. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Now it's time for questions. So let me start first of all saying that you can uh, use the chat on YouTube to uh, ask whatever you want uh, regarding the program or any uh, other technical um, thing related to the, to the course. And let me start with a couple of very uh, technical questions. So the first one is related to, um, uh, let, let, let's read the, the question. So uh, one of you is asking if there is the uh, is is there any possibility we share WhatsApp group link for uh, intake students? Um, so I'm not sure about WhatsApp, but uh, in general uh, we will have several activities and opportunities both at the uh, university level. So especially for international students, there are activities that uh, uh, are specifically designed to. Uh, give you the opportunity to meet uh, other students so to uh, for networking and for uh, sharing problems or any uh, anything that is related to your life in Padova 
but we will have also similar uh, activities uh, within our program. So we are uh, already active on uh, social media. So probably this is uh, could be one uh, opportunity to meet other people, and uh, and obviously there are hopefully if the emergency is not as uh, bad as now, you'll have also several uh, chances to meet uh, other students in person in in Padua. Okay, so. We have another question that is, uh, so I'm going to read all the questions uh, uh, as uh, starting from what you uh, put on the chat. Then uh, also, uh, obviously all the other colleagues uh, are uh, welcome to answer, uh, especially if uh, uh, the questions is related to, uh, to their hierarchical expertise. So this is another technical one, and this is related to uh, what uh, Laura was saying at the very end. So this student is asking if uh, uh, he's studying computer engineering in Padua. And uh, okay, and the question is, if I don't reach uh, one of the um, uh, thing that uh, the, you have to, uh, I mean, one of the prerequisites in order to uh, enroll uh, to the program is also is related to your final grade. And so he's asking uh, if uh, I don't reach at least uh, 85, does this, means, uh, uh, does this mean that I can take the master course? Okay, so th this is an arc string. So if uh, uh, this is something, yeah, that it's not, uh, uh, I mean, this is mandatory. So the, there are, this, this is one of the uh, main uh, um, constraints. The other one that is related to the courses that you have already uh, covered in your bachelor. So in that case, uh, it might be that there are, so a committee will evaluate uh, uh, your previous uh, curriculum, especially if you come from, uh, 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 let's say not standard areas. So it, it might be that some uh, courses are not, uh, so if you come from Padova, it's, uh, or any Italian university, especially from uh, computer science or engineering, you're, you'll probably be more than fine with our um, entry, uh, uh, our constraints in terms of classes, uh, because they are not that, uh, uh, I mean, you have not huge thresholds to be, uh, I mean, to take, uh, uh, to take care. But if you come from slightly different backgrounds, like, I don't know, like mathematics maybe, or, or not, not engineering, or not computer science, it might be that uh, uh, you might have problems with some of them, uh, but in that case, uh, we will evaluate also, on, uh, I mean, depending on your specific background. Okay, so we have another question that is, uh, uh, okay, how will the topic, this is a very general question. How will the topics be treated? A theoretical approach and a little practice or a more real life approach accustomed to the working world? I can take the question uh, yeah. if you want, yeah. So uh, I think as a, uh, at the program level, so the, or the overall program, there'll be a mixture of uh, theory and practice. Uh, I mean, I didn't go into the contents of the different courses, but even from the titles, you can probably understand that, that there are some courses that are uh, more uh, theory oriented and some others that are more application oriented. And so it, uh, it probably would be a, a mix of some courses that are almost exclusively dealing with theory, uh, some courses that will have a theoretical part and maybe a more practical part, uh, maybe through a project or through some homework or lab activities, and some courses that are even more heavily oriented towards applications. So the, um, what you should do if uh, in doubt, when uh, trying to understand how, what is the content of these courses uh, and potentially which, which to choose from the electives, you go to the syllabus, uh, so to the uh, teaching website of the university, and each course has its own syllabus, which is a detailed description of the course content the prerequisites, the uh, exam, so how the exam works, uh, also the teaching material, the textbooks, uh, and so you can easily understand from that description uh, which courses are uh, more theoretical, which are more application oriented, and get an idea of the overall thing. But you know, the, the nature of the course is precisely to be 
strong theoretical background, but very strong tie to practical applications and uh, real needs of the real world. Thanks, Michele. Does anyone else want to add uh, a few words? Yeah, uh, Lamberto. Another thing to consider is uh, the internship uh, program. Uh, the thesis is not uh, necessarily only an academic thesis, but uh, you can spend uh, uh, part of your time in an internship with a company. As we said, you have strong connections with the industry and the companies, and they are keen to host uh, uh, students uh, uh, to put uh, them working uh, on their real life uh, projects. So there is uh, a lot of room to, to create the right path, the right program. Thanks, Nicola. Anyone else? Okay, cool. I think in, in the meantime, we can uh, also, uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, administrative questions that are related to what uh, Laura was saying at the very end. So I would like to start with the first one and maybe Laura, you can uh, ask, uh, I mean, you can start. Yes, so uh, the question is, can the fees be reduced by ISEF? Yes, of course. The, yes, uh, the University of Padova event region uh, support uh, 2,600. It's about the, the fees, but yes, of course, uh, which is a you can it can be reduced. Okay, surely. Then we have another one. I think this is also general, so it would be nice if uh, uh, I mean all of us can uh, say a few words on it uh, about it. So the, the student is asking, thanks. Uh, okay, I wonder if there will be any partnership with other universities, partner covered by Laura, but I'd like to add a few, uh, few words on it. So we have uh, uh, several uh, partnerships as uh, uh, Laura was alighting. And so you can start from uh, the links that uh, she uh, shared, uh, have shared on my website, uh, where you can find a lot of information about it. But in a nutshell, I mean, we can say that we have multiple opportunities. And so, for example, regarding the US, uh, there are exchange program with uh, uh, Boston University. There are others with Canada, such as uh, University of British Columbia. And this is just the first one that uh, I have in mind. But yeah, there are for sure mul multiple opportunities. And many of the professors uh, that are teaching, that are going to teach uh, uh, research collaboration so especially for this could be also the case that you'd like to i mean maybe to do something in collaboration with other university during your uh, master thesis and this might be an option let me add that if if the question includes also the idea of doing international mobility to the us uh, now given that uh, there are issues about the cost as well as uh, visa issues for the US. Uh, uh, in principle, this can be done. In fact, uh, at the university level, as Laura was saying, we have some programs of international exchange, which include US universities. It's a call for, for uh, applications. And then you can, uh, if you win a position, then you can actually go to the US there. Another possibility uh, could be to do your internship and thesis in the US, uh, given that you can you know, deal with the visa issues and all that. And so there are some, some possibilities uh, that uh, uh, could be implemented, uh, uh, even though it's obviously more difficult than doing it uh, in Italy or in Europe because of, uh, you know, international and, and visa, visa issues there. Now, there's also a question uh, on the uh, math, Oh yeah, yeah. So the last one, can I ask for that that one as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, even though administratively the program is uh, uh, handled by the math department, it's actually a joint effort, equally carried by the math department and the information engineering department. And if you look at the list of the courses, uh, there is almost nothing that is pure math. Right. Well, maybe cryptography can be seen as pure math, but you know everything else is applied math and it's towards uh, applications or if it's uh, mathematical and theoretical, it's uh, uh, oriented towards then uh, applications of these tools 
to real scenarios. So if the the you know concern is that uh, oh I'm going to do a lot of math uh, and not uh, enough applications, uh, you should be. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, I agree. I'm from the math department, but actually our math department we are not only people doing. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, theore super theoretical stuff and as Michele uh, uh, was saying uh, and this is also something that has been uh, uh, covered uh, in depth during the present previous presentation this is really a uh, insurance from uh, all the uh, uh, main partners that are and, and this is a, a highly uh, and technical uh, program okay the questions for uh, uh, Michele Zorzi. I've seen many very interesting courses. Will there be anything more specific? What's that? Regarding? No, okay, sorry. I'm not it's, sure. It's penetration test. Ah, penetration test. Yeah. What is that? Penetration testing. Mm. I think more for Mauro. Yeah, probably Mauro can uh, yeah, have a few words also. Yeah, we, ha we have a course on uh, ethical hacking that, that uh, of course, will take. Uh, also this into account and uh, we are also designing a very practical uh, course about this so we'll have uh, some simulation tools for this okay this is a uh, there is another technical questions that and probably michele is the right person to answer yeah. so uh, there is a student that is uh, actually uh, uh, i mean he, uh, he he or she is studying uh, uh, she is studying for the master degree in ICT. Mm -hmm. She already took some of the exams in cybersecurity plan. Is it possible to change master degree, saving them? So it is always possible to uh, move from one program to another, right? Uh, in doing so, then you may be able to keep some uh, activities and exams uh, you took in, in the previous program while transferring to the other program. Uh, now this of course depends on the specifics, right, of uh, what you did. But you know, if uh, what you did uh, in, in your uh, current program appears in the program you want to join, then you should probably be a fairly uh, sure that uh, all of this will be recognized and, and uh, credited. When you when you transfer, but this is a question for you know the teaching uh, committee for the new for the new curriculum. Thanks. There is uh, there was also another question um, question that is uh, uh, general, and this, that's the question. So, do the courses have assignments or teamworks to put things into practice? Partially, we have already answered to this uh, because this is obviously related also to the uh, what's the amount of practical or hands-on experiences uh, uh, we'll have in our courses. Um, but I think, oh, oh, I mean, you can, uh, I can say uh, a few words about, uh, for example, my course. I will teach uh, vision and conscious services, uh, especially, I mean, the, the, it's one course that is related to cybersecurity because it's mostly related to computer vision. So in that case, uh, we, will uh, we will have uh, course projects. So this is just one example. I'm aware that this is not happen also in other courses. But I don't know, Mauro, Nicola, Michele, if you want to add a few words also, maybe related to your classes. Um, generally, in, in some of the but courses. Think... Oh, yeah. ah, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's fairly typical. Uh, maybe not for the most introductory courses, uh, for the foundational ones, but for, from uh, medium to advanced courses, uh, it's fairly typical to have uh, homeworks, uh, assignments, uh, group uh, projects, uh, uh, etc. So th this is uh, something uh, uh, we, we do. Uh, that's true also in the case of my courses on databases and web applications, where basically you develop uh, real life uh, uh, projects or almost real life projects uh, in uh, in groups of uh, of uh, students. So I think that that it's a fairly standard uh, approach. 
If I may uh, follow up on the previous uh, answer, uh, Lamberto, about uh, you know transferring from another program to this program here, uh, and this may actually be a question for Laura. Uh, if someone is currently enrolled in the first year of a master program and wants to move to cybersecurity next year, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they will be enrolled as yes. second. It's exactly. the, and and all the courses that are scheduled for the second year, this year 2021, because this is officially the first year only, and the second year will only appear in 21-22. So if you transfer from a different program, you should be aware that there is this difficulty that some of the courses you may want to take uh, may not be offered. Yes, exactly. Okay? Yeah. okay, we have another question. So. Uh, is it possible to apply for time project while enrolled in this uh, master degree? I don't have the answer. So I think that uh, maybe uh, Mauro, Nicola, or also Laura can add a few words on it. Sorry, what is the question? Because I, I'm looking so for- About the I'm time uh, framework. The time framework. Is it open for our students? That, uh, uh, university. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. in general so program, it should so it should be, yeah. Yes, you you can find everything online, the schedule timing. Uh, we have to plan the the, the schedule pro, the program the project the program uh, the scheduling because it's not to cybersecurity students, so they can access it. Then how to access it and and the logistics, of course, is uh, it's, follows it's, uh, its own schedule. rules. But uh, um, I would think that you know cybersecurity students uh, can uh, join the time program in our department, for example. Any student of any master's program can join the time program. Yes. And so I would assume that this is open to these students as well. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, and we are uh, all the information will coming soon mm -hmm. on uh, on the website. We publish everything. So sure. Okay. Okay, the, there's another question that is related to the number of, uh, if there are, uh, are there any courses? Yeah, yeah. For 50 students. But this, the second call is now, is still open, so they can apply and they can be admitted to the program. Uh, interested students, uh, what are the uh, current deadlines for? For international students, yes, uh, 7 July is the deadline. Uh, for Italian students, I don't know because Avviso di Ammissione is not yet published. So um, we have to wait for this, this call for application. But typically, it's uh, through the end of the year, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, the end this, of the year. this is the period. Yeah. This is the period. Right. It's right in June. Uh, we have uh, this week, or maybe the secretary uh, told me next, uh, last week that this week, or maybe next. Well, they will publish the Aviso di Missione. And for all the summer, we will be open, the call will be open. Thanks. Okay, we have another question. Maybe I got yeah, it wrong, but I think from the year 21st, 2012, uh, the course could be different from those offered Can now. I take that? Uh, yeah. So the only difference is that there will be more courses because uh, uh, for the year, 2021 only the first year courses will be active because this is the year which is uh, ongoing in 21 22 in addition to the courses that will be offered this coming year there'll be more courses so all those uh, scheduled for the second year that are not active already in the next year okay so uh, it will uh, reach steady state and so we'll have both years active whereas in 2021 we only have the first year active and so the uh, offer will be limited because it only relates to the first year yeah i think the let's say the, the issue uh, was uh, i mean it's all it might be a problem only for cases such as the previous one where we have students that uh, want to change uh, the the are already enrolled but for people starting uh, the, this year it's i mean it's nothing uh, you'll be not affected by this obviously okay. 
Okay. So uh, apparently we don't have any any more questions. Um, okay. Uh, so I think since it's a bit late, uh, let's say this is the last poll. If you have uh, additional questions, please uh, um, do it through the through the chat. Okay, here we are. Mr. Farina talk about possible career opportunities in ministry. Company seniors talk about what is the business world. I'm curious, what about uh, uh, career opportunities in academia? This is for all of us. So who, who want to start? That's always a possibility, right? Uh, uh, we need professors eventually. And so the academic uh, world uh, is certainly one uh, possibility for future career. Now in Italy, the number of positions is very small, but uh, it's non-zero. Right? Clearly, you know, if you want to pursue an academic career, then uh, you must do a PhD after your master's uh, and you know doing research so usually when you do your master's thesis uh, it's a good time to try to understand uh, you know what is your inclination your interest and your also your ability to pursue an academic career and of course your advisor or thesis supervisor will be the right person to tell you whether this is uh, something you should pursue or whether you should instead uh, direct your interest uh, towards industry. Uh, um, another thing uh, you could uh, add on top of this uh, is to understand that PhD, so an even higher level of education is obviously uh, needed for pursuing any academic career, but it is not only for pursuing uh, an academic uh, career. So you can surely plan to have a PhD. You have an excellent uh, school for PhD students in both uh, our yeah. departments. And uh, yeah. that's an uh, opportunity uh, then to try an academic career, but also to go, for example, to research and development in uh, worldwide uh, industry or uh, uh, students own a startup with uh, uh, latest research results. So in general, don't be scared about uh, thinking at uh, uh, at least a, a higher level uh, education uh, degree. Thanks, Nicola. Okay, uh, I will leave the floor to uh, Mauro. Just me before that, that uh, can add a few words uh, of question since he is uh, working in the cybersecurity area. So maybe he can also uh, say a few things about uh, cybersecurity in terms of research opportunities. But before doing that, uh, let me just spend one minute or even less uh, answering to this other question, because this might be uh, probably something was not completely clear for the, to the student. Uh, and the question is, if I want to pass on it, just to uh, describe in detail previously, the entire semester is uh, uh, covered by the master thesis, 20 credits plus that is uh, converted now. And also Thanks, Lamberto. Uh, yeah, just to confirm that, strongly confirm your uh, acquisition of research career in cybersecurity. Uh, so uh, you're more than welcome to, to, to join our program also if you have uh, this, this ambition. Uh, so now I would like to close this event. So I would like to thank the University of Padua and all the people that made this uh, possible, this event and the starting of new uh, master degree. Thank to all our prestigious speakers that we had today and to all the people that attended the event and particularly to our prospective students. We look forward to seeing you in Padova. <laughs>